it has. It's been a fucking long night, hasn't it? Fuck. Jesus. And I'm Scottish. Fuck's sake, you're getting on and then they get two in a row. Jesus. Like buses. Where was the woman from here? You're from here. Hello, darling. How are you? Welcome. I'm from Edinburgh because I'm better than you. Uh, <laughs> let's start. It's been a long night. I'm quite pissed. I won't fucking lie. Um, there are some stereotypes that we like to fucking fit into and drinking is fucking one of them, isn't it? Oh, well, I say drinking, it's madry or what the fuck it's called. <laughs> In Scotland, we call it driving lager. Fuck the rules. <laughs> yeah. I drink, I smoke, I take drugs because I've got four kids and you can't do that shit without a lot of help. <laughs> do we have any parents in? Oh, oh, you're waving your hand in the finger motion like you like them. Uh, that's nice. How many do you have? One, that's not really breeding. It's more like having a pet. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, put a fucking effort in. I've done four. That's a lot. That is overbreeding, if anything. Obviously, four kids are married for the second time. They can't all have the same father. Those are the rules. Uh, <laughs> It's been, it's been a fucking great night. Honestly, I love this gig because we can talk about shit and, and it's been shit. The last few years have been shit. I, uh, I, I think we've all become stupid. I think that's what's happened. I think we've become thick as fuck. <laughs> oh, no, genuine, I was uh, just, I was back from Australia. I was in Australia for four months. I flew to Australia, obviously, because it would be a, weird if you didn't. Um, <laughs> do you know what? They've changed the safety announcement on the uh, flights. Have you seen this? I don't know if it's domestic flights. They've definitely done it on international fucking long haul. In the event of an emergency now, before putting on your oxygen mask, if you are wearing a face covering, remember to take that off first. <laughs> are you fucking shitting me? Is that how fucking stupid we've become? People have to be told to take off a fucking face covering before putting on an oxygen mask. They deserve to die. <laughs> I've never understood the oxygen mask anyway. Who's at 36,000 feet hurtling towards Earth thinking, oh, I'd really like to stay awake for this shit. <laughs> We're fucking mental. We've gone mental. I blame the internet. I genuinely blame the internet. I think that's what's made us all fucking dumb as fuck, right? Facebook, I was going to come off Facebook, the cesspit of fucking oversharing, right? I was going to come off Facebook, but then <clears throat> I remember my birthday was coming up, so fuck. <laughs> Got to be on Facebook for your birthday, otherwise what's the point of birthdays, really? You wake up in the morning, you get all your birthday messages, don't you? It's like, ooh, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. I don't even look who they're from, I just count them. <laughs> See how popular I am, just like go in again about midday and I go, ooh, 56, 57, 58. <laughs> I then go in about again, just before midnight, go, thank you for all my birthday messages. <laughs> And then you get another laugh to people last minute dot com. Oh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, right? And genuinely, the reason I was going to come off Facebook, this is the level of fucking timeline oversharing that I have, right? Somebody, a friend, 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 had put on Facebook, she was still traumatized because she had an abortion 30 fucking years ago. <laughs> She put it on Facebook. She put it on fucking Facebook. I'm reading it going, oh my fucking God. I'm traumatized because I didn't. <laughs> I mean, have a better fucking dignity, sister, please, right? And also, I mean, at least we both had the choice about whether or not to have an abortion. Am I right, America? You fucking lunatics. <laughs> So I thought, right, well, if I'm staying, I'm oversharing, right? I'm staying, I'm fucking, oh, I went balls deep. Oh my God, I waited till just before midnight. I went, thank you for all my birthday messages. A uh, little bit bittersweet this year, because it marks the year my mum's been dead longer than I knew her. I know, trauma. 240 likes though, fucking hell! Get in! Oh my God, I see why people do it. It's bloody marvellous. I'm all about the oversharing. Oh, it's wonderful. It was a tsunami of emotion. There was love hearts, there was all babes, private messages. I was like, this is fucking great. Obviously, a bit awkward when my mum put a question mark. But... <laughs> that woman has no sense of humour, no. 
<laughs> oh, I'm kidding. She's dead. <laughs> oh. It is. It's been a weird fucking time. Have we all had COVID now? Yeah. Thank fuck for that. Getting the party bus on board. I, uh, I had the end of August 2020. Spoiler alert. I survived. Um, I'd have been fucking pissed off if COVID had killed me. Oh, do you, I really, on, you know who else would have been pissed off if COVID had killed me? Heart attack, cancer and stroke. They wouldn't have been happy. Because I know I look like somebody that might have had a stable upbringing. However, I'm Scottish. I've been drinking alcohol since I was 11. I've been smoking fags since I was 12. Heart attack, cancer and stroke have had me in their sights for quite some fucking time now. Saw so COVID coming over here like Billy Big Bollocks threatening to kill everybody. Heart attack, cancer and stroke. Well, I get in a fucking queue. We've got this, bitch. Oh. It's mental, isn't it? I don't know. The world we're living in, I think we've all... I do think we've all... I went... Men Did anyone go mental through the pandemic? Yeah. I lost my shit, right? I honestly... Because I'm, I'm 57. Basically, what's happened, I, I've gone feral. Um, <laughs> my kids have all grown up. I'm single for the first time since 1989. I've given up my house in Scotland. I'm going to buy a van. I'm going to fucking live in it. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. But it was, because then after I split up with my husband, we were still in second marriage, 23 years. I still put in a fucking shift. Jesus Christ, right? It's hard to know how to surprise somebody when we went out for his birthday, right? Hard to know how to surprise somebody after 23 years. So I asked him to leave. Um, <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> It was, it was weird. It was weird splitting up after all that time. We had to sort out all our stuff. That was fucking odd. I, uh, I was finding things I didn't even know I owned anymore. I was like, when did we even buy this shit, right? Although I did, I found a, I found a present I bought the kids for Christmas 10 fucking years ago, because I remember buying it, right? You know that thing? I get really organized about October time and start buying little bits and pieces and then I wrap it and I stash it. I think, oh, nobody will find it here, including me, it turned out. <laughs> As soon as I saw it, I knew what it was. I was like, oh my God, the kids would have loved a puppy. Fuck. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was a kitten. Um, but it is it's weird. But who's single? Who's single? Who's single in their 50s, actually? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> It is, it's a different world. It genuinely, is. somebody has suggested a dating site to me. Has anyone tried the dating sites? Wow, what a fucking experience, genuinely, right? I have no idea. I was like, people like Tinder and fucking Hinge. There's one called Bumble. Are we familiar with Bumble? <gasps> oh, do you know what it reminded me of? Selling my house. <laughs> it's the one where women can talk to the men, but the men can't talk to the women first, right? And then I honestly, it's like, because men can't speak to you, but they can view you like they're fucking, you're selling the house and putting notes of interest. And I didn't help myself because I did do my description like I was selling my house. I was like, built in the 60s. Um, in need of some renovation, full of character, <laughs> front and rear parking. Um, <laughs> I went, man, I had a lodger, I had a, it's not a euphemism, I had a, uh, another comedian living with me during lockdown after I split up from my husband. Conversations with comedians are just really different, right? Uh, he said to me one morning, what are you up to today, Jojo? It's like, it's fucking middle of the lockdown, I'm up to fuck all, right? And I was like, well, I'm going to have a cup of tea, a bit of toast, and then I'm going to hang myself in the bathroom. Yeah, that's how I felt. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to hang myself in the bathroom, and he was like, why? <laughs> cup of tea, a bit of toast, hang myself in the bathroom, he's like, why are you bothering with the toast? And I thought, that's... <laughs> it's pretty valid, isn't it? I didn't bother. I didn't bother. Who is over 50 in this room? Give me a cheer. <laughs> Do you know what? I think it is the last bastion of discrimination. Genuinely, right? We've done the whole Me Too thing. We've done the whole fucking Black Lives Matter. Do you know what? When it comes to being in your 50s, you become genuinely invisible, right? I don't feel... How old, do you... How old are you, sir? 60, how old do you feel in your head? 18. 18, exactly. Genuinely, I honestly do. The only reason I know, because people treat me differently, right? My youngest, Finn, I've got a 20-year-old daughter called Finn Laden, because I really wanted a boy. <laughs> and she needs fucking shooting. Uh, so... But she's a different generation, right? She just thinks I'm in my 50s. This is what trauma consists of for Finn, right? 
she got, she wasn't answering her telephone. And I was like, what the fuck's up with her? And I phoned her and she wasn't answering. I went through to her work. I turned up at her work. And then genuinely, the doorman said to me, oh, have you got a reservation? I was like, no, I'm here to see my daughter. I think she's quite upset. Oh, yes, she's been very emotional. I was like, mm, fuck, right? Glad I turned up, right? I get in there. She launches herself at me in floods of tears. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? What the fuck? Do you know, as a parent, you're like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Jesus, right? And not the kind of tears that I recognise. They're not, I knew she split up with her boyfriend. They're not those kind of tears. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, I'm on my period. They're not those kind of tears. They're not, I've been raped tears. I recognise those tears. They're not, I've been raped tears, right? I'm like, what kind of fucking tears are they? I finally, she said, you've been using up tears just to see me special. I was like, yeah, of course I have, but <clears throat> do you have a gig? Uh, so, what the fuck's going on? Genuinely. You know what my 20-year-old daughter said to me? I just think, I just feel, I'm not thriving. <laughs> How the fuck I didn't piss myself laughing at that spoiled, self-entitled little cunt, I have no idea. I'm like, fucking not thriving, you arsehole. Genuinely, right? I got a parking ticket in Edinburgh, and I go back to the car. My parking ticket was there. The fucking traffic warden was still there. And I was like, oh, come on, come on. I'm a couple of minutes late. Just you can let me up. You know, I was flirting. And I was like, <laughs> you know, because those are the rules. Women flirt. Men are violent. So, <laughs> we know the fucking score. So I was like, oh, come on, let me up. You know, he said to me, and he winked to me. I thought, oh, I fucking still got it. I still got it, right? He winked to me, he said, look, you know, I've already is issued the ticket, but Edinburgh Council are really good at appealing parking tickets. So what you need to do, just go back to your computer and just say something like, your grandson had an accident. <laughs> My fucking what? I didn't even have a child with me. This little bastard has just assumed a lifestyle for me. And it is, as soon as you get into your 50s, you're deemed that you don't fucking understand. And there's the irony. We remember the 60s, you remember the 60s, rock and roll, 70s, flower power, 80s, fucking David Bowie. There are only two words you need to know. Don't you fucking tell me I don't understand how the fucking world works. You don't understand change. Yes, I fucking do. I remember when salt and vinegar fucking changed walkers from salt and vinegar into green packets from blue packets. I fucking get it. Get over yourselves. Couldn't give less of a shit, honestly. I turned out, I found out today I'm a no man. Great, One, fucking 100% wonderful. I, so that's the, because before I was in Australia, like I say, before I went to Australia, right, I did some gigs in the Middle East. Uh, don't judge me. The money, fuck off, don't judge me. The money was great, we're all hypocrites. Fuck off, all right? <laughs> Honestly, I was like, people gave me such a hard time. It's like, why are you gigging in the Middle East? They've got a dreadful record on human rights. They've got an even worse record on women's rights. I'm like, what the fuck do I know about women's rights? I don't have a cock. So, <laughs> don't ask me. I go and get to make the fucking decisions, right? And it is that thing, because I was, I was out in Abu Dhabi. I got on a lift in Abu Dhabi, right? And then this is a fucking, a man was in the lift. He said, what floor are you? I said, oh, my floor four, thanks very much. And he went, oh, where are you from? I was like, Scotland. It's like vacation. I was like, what's with all the chatting? I was like, well, no, actually, I'm working. He went, good. What's your room number? <laughs> oh, not that kind of working. I know, genuinely. He, so prostitution is really prevalent in the Middle East. I didn't know that. Uh, he thought I was a prostitute. Yeah. I know. So I got obviously, I obviously I got all flustered because I had no idea what to charge. Um, <laughs> exchange rates and everything is all a bit tricky. So turns out I'm worth a bob or two. I know that's not very hashtag me too, but fuck it, I'm in my 50s. You take it where you can get it now. I mean, in your 20s, your 30s, even your 40s, you might still be telling men to fuck off. You get to your 50s, you're like, fucking harass me, Jesus. <laughs> Invisible. Uh, I'm kidding, don't, don't harass me. <laughs> there are still plenty of men out there who think harass is two words. Um, <laughs> Although I don't subscribe to the idea that all men are bastards and all women are victims. Some people are just cunts. 
on it, isn't it? I think we genuinely live in a world that's fucking beautiful, and I think we're fucking getting heralded up for being all kinds of things that we're not. And I'm, and cunt is what I... Oh, I did actually. I called my ex-husband a cunt the other day, and I felt really bad, because he's not. He really isn't. He's not, he's not a cunt. He's not deep enough or warm enough to be a cunt. Um, <laughs> But we are, we're living it. I don't, I honestly don't know what's going on. I couldn't give a fuck how people live their lives. I, like I say, I'm going to go and live in a van. But it was, the last three years have been weird. They have been fucking weird. And I, uh, I don't know if you remember, you know when we first kind of, the restrictions were lifted, Scotland was much more uh, restrictive than England because uh, Nicola Sturgeon, who referred to herself as Chief Mammy, I'm like, get in the fucking bin, Nicola. <laughs> You're not my mother. My own mother would not have fucking grounded me for that long. And uh, the first time we were able to, you know, the first time we were able to get together legally, right? Because we all broke the rules, and if you fucking didn't, you're a liar. Um, my kids actually, because I take the piss out of my kids, of course I do, because, you know, I take the piss out of my kids. My kids actually said to me, uh, could you stop taking the piss out of us? And I'm like, absolutely not, uh, it earns me money. Um, <laughs> But genuinely, uh, the first opportunity to actually, when restaurants opened, my kids actually phoned me up and they was like, come on, mum, we're going to take you out for dinner, our treat. You don't turn that shit down, right? And they took me to an eye-wateringly expensive restaurant in Edinburgh. And it was fucking good. You know, when you first did get back together with people, whether you wanted to or not, it was like, you know, <laughs> yeah, some people I'm really glad we never got back together with. Uh, but we got back together and it was just proper laughing, just laughing and just having a laugh because my kids have never necessarily got on. We're parents in the room again. Do you, how many kids do you have? None that you know of. I thought you had one. Who had one? You had one. Oh, so that doesn't have... So my kids, so when I had, I had my boy, then I had my girl, right? And he fucking hated her on site, hated her on site. He was like, I don't like her. I fucking don't like her. And then I was like, well, he was like, I want a brother. I'm like, well, I can't do anything about that, right? And then, so when I got pregnant for the third time, I was like, he was like, I want a brother. I was like, shit. I got a scan to find out what I was having. And I found out I was having a girl. So I said to him, I sat him down, I said, like, oh, tried to make it all really exciting. I was like, oh my God, you're gonna have another sister. And then weirdly, he was like, oh my God, that's amazing, fantastic. I was like, oh, really? I've got through to him until he said, brilliant, when does Kira leave? He thought he was getting another <laughs> sister. Like this one clearly hasn't fucking worked out. She's a piece of shit, can we just get rid of her? We'll try again, we'll try again for a boy. So it was like, so it's kind of, okay, I went to the loo, I came back. And then I, they were just, they were proper laughing. They were sorting out the bill. They were having the best time. And it was just lovely. I genuinely thought in the last three years had been so fucking hellish. And I was just, I looked at them and I had a moment. I don't mind sharing it with you. I've shared it with a lot of people. I had a moment. I looked at them and I saw my empty chair and I was like, do you know what? There is going to be a day. I'm not here. It's going to be a day. None of us are here. Sorry to break it to you. But I was like, I think they're going to be all right. I genuinely think they're going to be all right. I'm not vaccinated. I didn't wear a mask. Do you know people are like, oh, fucking hell, you know, playing chicken with a fucking killer virus. Turns out I'm all right. Um, well done, Novak Djokovic, for winning 23 fucking years. You really fucking could not say that three years ago, trust me. Anyway, I looked at my children. I thought they're going to be all right. My son's really sensitive. As soon as I sat down, and I sat down in my chair, and he just grabbed my hand. And I thought, oh, he, f he knows, he knows what I'm thinking. He went, Mum, we absolutely can't afford this. Can you get it? <laughs> I thought they're fucked, aren't they? They're absolutely fucked. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to, well, hopefully, oh, well, I'm, well, I'm going to go now before my pelvic floor does. Uh, this is genuinely a great gig to keep supporting live comedy, keep talking to each other, keep disagreeing with each other, keep just having the best life you can. I've been doing something, take care tonight. <laughs> <laughs>